Welcome to the Muscular System Lab. In this lab, we will cover the basics of the skeletal system as well as the muscle system. We will begin our discussions with the skeletal system. Bones are the major organs of the skeletal system. Seen here is a picture of the longest bone in your body, the femur. The ends of a long bone are termed epiphyses. Each end of the long bone is an epiphysis. The shaft of the long bone is termed the diaphysis. Found on the epiphyses where the bone articulates with another bone is articular cartilage. Its function is to reduce friction in the joint as the bones move past one another. The epiphyseal line is a remnant of the epiphyseal plate, which is commonly referred to as the growth plate. The plate is a disc of hyaline cartilage that grows during childhood in order for the bone to lengthen. The medullary cavity stores adipose or fat tissue in adults. The tissue is referred to as yellow bone marrow. Endosteum is a delicate connective tissue that lines the medullary cavity. Periosteum is a fibrous connective tissue that covers the bone everywhere except where there is articular cartilage. It is through the nutrient foramens through which blood vessels pass to transport nutrients from the outside through the periosteum to the inside of the bone. The diaphysis of the long bone consists primarily of compact bone, and the epiphyses consists most, mostly of spongy bone. Next we view a model of a wedge of compact bone. Compact bone is made up of cylindrical units known as osteons sometimes referred to as the weight-bearing pillow, pillars in the bone. Also notice the tremendous blood supply to the bone. In the center of each osteon is a, con a canal termed a hyvergian or osteonic canal through which blood vessels and nervous tissue travel. Volkmann's or perforating canals run perpendicular and connect the blood and nervous tissue of the periosteum to the inner central canals. Osteocytes are the mature bone cells that maintains the bone matrix. Skeletal bones of the human body are classified as either axial or appendicular bones. The bones see here that are highlighted in blue are classified as axial skeletal bones. Those making the, up the axial system, the skull, vertebrae, ribs, ossicles of the inner ear, and the hyoid. Bones that are highlighted in pink are classified as appendicular skeletal bones. The shoulder girdle or pectoral girdle, upper limbs, the pelvic girdle, and the lower limbs. The next slides will more specifically identify these bones. Here are axial skeletal bones making up the skull which protects the brain. And here is a view of the hyoid bone which functions in supporting the tongue. Here are axial skeletal bones making up the rib cage. Humans have 12 ribs on each side. Here are axial skeletal bones of the vertebral column. Each bone is known singularly as a vertebra. Vertebrae of the neck region are known as cervical vertebrae. We have seven. Next are the thoracic. We have 12 of those and the vertebral bones at the lower back are known as the lumbar vertebrae and we have five. On the lower end of the column are five fused vertebrae that make up our sacrum and the tip are four fused making up the coccyx or you may have heard it called your tailbone. Identified here are appendicular skeletal bones. The pectoral girdle is comprised of the clavicle, the scapula, and the upper bo arm bone, the humerus. Identified here is the pelvic girdle made up of a coxa, your hip bone, and the upper leg bone, the femur. In this view of the skeletal model, the bones identified are the humerus, the two lower arm bones, the ulna, and the radius. The ulna bone lines up with your pinky finger and the radius aligns on the side of your arm with your thumb. Here's the thigh bone, the femur, the lower leg bones, the tibia, which bears your body's weight, and the fibula, which functions in stabilizing the lower leg. Last, we identify the calcaneus. 
your heel bone. We now take our discussions to the muscular system. Muscle actions describe the type of movement that will occur when a muscle contracts. The muscle action occurs due to contractions of the muscle pulling on the bone by way of the attached tendons causing the bone to move. Muscle actions are generally views, viewed as pairs in which action is the opposing action of the other. Flexion decreases the angle of a joint. Extension increases the angle of the joint as seen here with the elbow. Plantar flexion is movement of the foot that points the toe downward as if you were standing on your tippy toes. Dorsiflexion is movement of the foot that points the toes upward. Abduction is the movement of the body part away from the midline. Adduction is the movement of the body part towards the midline. Muscle anatomy. Now we move to identifying structural components of muscle and of muscle themselves. Muscles are made up of bundles of bundles of structural units. Bundles of muscle fibers make up a fascicle, and bundles of fascicles make up the muscle. The muscle itself is attached to bone by way of tendons. When the muscle contracts, the muscle pulls on the bone, causing the movement. Muscle fibers are surrounded by connective tissue known as endomysium. Fascicles are surrounded by paramysium and the muscle is surrounded by epimysium. Let's take a look at this diagram of a muscle fiber. The muscle fiber is actually made up of tiny bundles of myofibrils. The myofibrils are made up of bundles of myofilaments. The myofilaments, which are the contractile proteins of the muscle, are actin and myosin. The actin and myosin myofilaments are arranged in repeating units along the length of the myofibril. These repeating units form sarcomeres, the contractile unit of the muscle. Now we move to identifying major muscles of the human body. Orbicularis oculi, blinking shedding of eyelids, zygomaticus, draws corners of the mouth upwards, smiling, orbicularis oris, puckering of the lips, kissing, sternocleidomastoid, flexes the head, bows the head when contracting both, rotates the head toward the shoulder right or left when contracting one or the other sternocleidomastoid muscles, buccinator, sucking or blowing, Pectoralis major, adducts the arm toward the front to aid in climbing, throwing, or pushing. Rectus femoris, extends the knee joint, kicking. Deltoid, abducts the humerus, as in scarecrow position. Biceps brachii, flexes the elbow joint. Rectus abdominis, flexes the vertebral column as if you were doing a sit-up or a crunch. Rhomboids major, adducts the scapula, squaring of the shoulders. Triceps brachii, extends the elbow joint. Soleus, plantar flexes the foot, as well as the gastrocnemius, plantar flexes the foot. The calcaneal tendon, attaches the gastrocnemius and, and the soleus to the calcaneus bone. Trapezius, elevates the shoulders, extends the head to look up. Latissimus dorsi, adducts the humerus toward the back. Biceps femoris, flexes the knee joint.